I was working with this child in my other school who bit me through a pair of new jeans. And I was sitting on the floor. He was behind, beside me. He was, he was ranting and raving and, and, I mean, saying something so poignant. He said, why me, God? Why am I the special child? And he, lay, he put his head down and he bit me through the jeans. And, you know, there was a part of me that was hurting, but there was also the part of me that was hurting for this kid that he could identify this problem and ask that question. I was the only one who could, at that moment, respond in a way that wasn't gonna hurt him or else I was gonna hurt him some more. So, I used Aikido, <laughs> and which I had just been learning, and I took his head, which was still biting me, and I pushed it ever so gently into so that he could bite me more, in other words. So I was helping him bite in a way, except when you, when you blend in that way, you, he, he, it's not what they expected and, and it releases. <laughs> and so he, he quit biting me because it also probably jammed his nose into, into a little bit. I didn't do it harshly, but it was a, it was a nice example of how the real physical Aikido I was able to use. I'm Janet Dijogo. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Marin Country Day. I am a veteran teacher. I've taught a total of 41 years, four years in public schools, and um, 18 years in at a uh, school for disturbed children. And then I came to Marin Country Day 18 years ago. The person who was my head in the beginning, I kept doing, being an Aikido person, a secret, really. I didn't, because I thought it would be too far in what I viewed as a fairly traditional school. Um, and she found out about three months after I had started and said, why aren't you teaching it to the children? And I, I went, wow. <laughs> and I immediately, I think two days later, started doing it. And there's a still time. And inhale. And exhale, and then there's a still time. It's a um, non-competitive martial art, and it's a fairly modern martial art. Um, and the, the thing that makes it different than other martial arts, well, many things, but the main thing is that one um, learns to work with a partner, and you progress not by beating somebody else. You are assigned belts or given belts uh, according to what you know. And um, it is a fair mar art in that you throw four times and you are thrown four times. One is called uke, which is the art of falling, where you have to master that. And one is nage, which is the art of throwing. I don't teach Aikido, I teach what we call now energy time, which is the principles of Aikido. Time, you're curving this energy to scoop up their energy. Oh, I think. There are people that are born with Mercedes bodies and they can do anything in a body way. And, and um, Sam was a little like that. He just could do that. You know, he just had this body smarts. I did not, so I had to take one little step at a time. And for me, I had to integrate my mind, which at that point was better than my body at, at some times. But to learn to concentrate that, um, all at once and to line up the mind, body, and the spirit is, it was the work for me. Some people go to the dojo, the training place, to work up a sweat. Sam would say that sometimes. And then people like me were, were seeking um, a kind of a spiritual training, which involved the body. The body discipline of Aikido was very, very hard and frightening for me, <laughs> you know, to, to fall. Or as a woman, learning to hit was, um, the first time I tried to hit, my, I couldn't do it. You know, I, everything in me, my life experience was girls don't hit, mothers don't harm. Um, and I had to learn how to deliver. It took great mental um, strength for me to, to, to deliver a, a blow, you know, a strike that was true. 
a chance for the children to learn how to use their energy in different energies and learn about different energies. Uh, we start the year off by teaching vocabulary, teaching a half a dozen dozen words or so, um, how to sit, sit seiza, sit on your knees, straight backs, good posture. Okay, seiza. So the five principles of Aikido are, um, the first is the center. If you're really being really wild, it's up here, and if you're calmed down, it's down it's here. Down here. The Chinese call it Dantian, and the Japanese call it Hara, and it's two fingertips beneath your navel. And, and it's the center of, of power for a martial artist, anyway, where, where your energy is down. I think dancers and singers have a higher center. When I am in a situation like I currently am on camera, I am finding that breathing is important, and um, Breath is a is one of the big important things. If you, you know you heard that with Janet this morning, and then also getting centered. How do you find your center? Can you show me? When you put your attention into your center, you become, you have access to it. If you're if you think, oh yes, I'm centered, and you're not feeling, there's no. For most of us, there's not a way. It's only a word. You know, it's only, it's not being able to walk your talk. This allows you to walk that talk and it becomes one because your body and your mind are unified in the same place. I might just touch the back of their head and they, you know, they, they start to do this. And all you have to say is, feel my hand. And when they feel it, the attention, their attention rises to that place and they automatically become they're in a better place than they were when they're just when they're just tipping. So when you come up, be aligned. Yeah. So this all this doesn't happen. Just align. Okay. Know this about yourself. You your your energy goes ahead. Okay. Just stay with me right now. Do do this with me. Okay. All right. So get yourself centered. Right foot forward. The principle of ground, which is the utilization of the forces of gravity in your um, in your favor. So that in an, in Aikido, you use ground as your friend, <laughs> especially for us standing. It's an alignment that has your feet and your ankles and your knees and your hips and your shoulders and your head stacked, so that it is so that you you're what you know why people said sit up straight <laughs> it because you have more chance of being centered in that in that position okay and she's giving me back energy if i allow her to do this she's going to push me around do you see that so what i'm going to do is adjust myself she's got a lot of heat a lot of energy so i stand here and i get myself strong behind her she's got a lot of energy i drop my energy to match her okay the extension of energy of key so that you realize that your energy is, um, your energy is, I had to learn to think of it as something palpable, you know, that, that I was in charge of, that didn't come and go out of whim, but in fact, that I needed to have my, accept the energy I had, accept my power, in my case, um, and bring it in a, and bring it in tune with what was happening. And you're going to extend this energy arm to me, right to my heart, Joey. I teach them, for instance, to do, to do an energy arm, which is the extension of energy through this arm, so it becomes unbendable. And you know, it, it's in books. It's called the unbendable arm. Okay, now you're doing an unbendable arm. Okay, shoot your energy way into that quad. And I knew that the children, I just intuitively knew that if I told them to do that, they, they would do it. Whereas an adult has, will struggle with that because, oh yeah, right, you know, sure, I'm gonna bend, well, it's because you're so small or I'm so big, you can't do that. Um, but the children don't have that um, screen. It's just because they're so fresh. See, all you did was make one shift of attention and now you can do it. That's the unbendable arm. And if I try really hard and you hold your mind steady, I won't be able to bend that arm. Every one of those 54 kids can learn to do that, whereas with an adult, it may take a much longer time. Good job. Okay. 
you could take the principles of Aikido and impart them in adults, or have us hold on to them, the world would be a different place. The whole idea, first of all, I think, of owning, recognizing and owning your own power, which I think few of us really do. Another principle is to be able to relax and to bring up your power, to have a relationship with it, to be ready to blend. But you, you do this in a, in a um, state of total relaxation, but it's also the state of um, total awareness. Relaxation doesn't mean, you know, munching bonbons and reading or looking at a, a, a movie in this way. It, it just means um, a relaxed state of readiness that isn't tense, where your, your insides are open, ready for anything. In ET, one of the um, lessons that we teach is using soft eyes. In other words, you're looking straight ahead, you're looking at your task at hand, but you still have the vision on both sides of you in, in being aware of your soft eyes and what's happening. And the last thing, which I think is the genius of Aikido, is the blend. This means like wars, and this means peace. I have the children do this or this as a symbol of this symbolizes clash and conflict and then this is the, the Aikido symbol of uh, blending. So this is very different in, than in many martial arts. Change is coming, you know, okay, are you going to clash with change, which we teach the kids, or are you going to blend with it? In Aikido, if you break or hurt, um, or you hear this sound, it means a blend and properly done. So it's, it's the force, the incoming energy, and the incoming energy is, is the truth, and what you do with it is to, is to bring it into oneness. And so a true Aikidoist is supposed to be able to blend and skillfully neutralize the energy of the enemy or the partner. When I read a book, for instance, with, with children I sometimes have them clap their hands if they see, if they perceive a conflict. I have them open their hands if they feel that there is an opening occurring. It was warm and busy chirping came from the inside. So what kind of energy was that, would you say? It was, it was open and peaceful energy. They can link it with not this crazy thing that we do three days a week you know, in, in, on the mats, but that it's everywhere, that these energetic exchanges are what it's about. We are learning, we are learning, we are learning how to be. We are learning, we are learning, we are learning. I think probably one of the most valuable lessons is stop power, where you're doing something that might be a little on the edge of either not being safe or not being appropriate, and someone asks you to stop. Use your stop power. You know, be in control of your own body and take a deep breath, get centered. Everyone has to go through changes, whether it's lining up to go to P.E. or coming from a, a wild place in the classroom, a wilder place maybe where you're having an exploration time to now it's a stop and it's time to steady and focus on a specific topic for the whole class. So they have to make that transition. So I think just learning how to make transitions is probably the second biggest thing that happens in, in E.T. Now that would be, it, it is your own self and your own body, but it's, it's more of how you're working with the group and how you can change direction in a group. You know, if we're all sitting on the mat and we talk about how to find a partner and just really telling, telling everyone that there's a partner there that's just right for you and if someone comes up to you, makes eye contact with you, that you're excluding them if you walk away from them and that um, you need to be accepting of anyone that comes up to you. And it's a practice that we do mm -hmm. every day in ET with just going up and finding a partner, not you know, they have a tendency to think in their head, oh, I know I want to be with mm -hmm. so-and-so over there and race over there. And they're planning before they ever right. get off you know, the mat. So um, it, it helps just to get yourself centered and know that you're going to get up and there is going to be someone that you're going to be able to work with. We don't teach hitting, but I do teach um, hitting in the uh, the hitting, which is, can be a metaphor for the way one insults the way, the stance you take in your life verbally, because you can certainly do great injury through words. I will say, 
if a child has insulted another child. What has, you have made his spirit small. So I want them to know they're dealing with something that is beyond just behavior, that you have affected somebody's soul in who they are. And that's not, if it's negative, it's not okay with me. Um, when somebody hurts your feelings. What happens when somebody hurts your feelings? Your candle blows out. There's a light inside of you. There's a light, and we can either make the light of another person shine by being kind and showing them what a person they are, or we can extinguish lights. We can be become masters at the insult and the put down. If someone put it out, you would feel really bad, but if it was shining really bright, you'd feel happy. What if you played the game that you were responsible for everyone else's light as well? You know, that you, here's your light and there's 17 other lights in here. You know, what, what is our interplay going to be? How are we going to be with each other in order to keep those lights strong or shall we extinguish them all? So we play with words that way, which are metaphors, but I, I, think, that, I think the kids get it. Are you big and open or are you getting closed and in relation to um, other children you know like how are you feeling when this conflict happens mm -hmm. and kids use that like i'm feeling small and tight and i use that language a lot too or like are you open to this or are you closed mm -hmm. are you shutting down or are you feeling open and that's something that's a theme that i see my kids using all the time if they're only in tune with the external they give away their power, or they sell it, or it's beaten out of them, or it is so scary to them that the, their key, their, their energy freezes. If the child isn't doing, or the adult or the person isn't doing what makes them sing, then it might as well be somebody else's life. Also, the fact that no matter what comes at you, if somebody's intending to make you smaller by name calling or mm -hmm. excluding you, that you have the power to stay, to stay strong, right. as she was illustrating today, you know? Yep. Right. When somebody comes at you with 500 volts, be there with 1,000, you know, mm -hmm. that's your responsibility, mm -hmm. so that it's not always about the other person. I want the kids to know that there's never going to be another one of them in the world, and that they have, good, that the, the sense of direction needs to come from internally and to view the external as energy coming in, but what to do with that is up to them. There's a lot of stuff on your mind. You've got so much on your plate with, with academics and after school activities and stuff that, I mean, it can get pretty stressful. And um, it's not that I necessarily think about the same exercises we did in kindergarten, but... Um, the breathing. Yeah, the breathing. Lots of breathing. Definitely <laughs> the breathing. <laughs> but, um, I mean, some of those same basic skills can really help you as, you're, as you get older. They will adopt ideas, and hopefully those ideas will be on tap for them, as it will. You know, I, I think we're not, I'm not looking for transformation, because these are good kids already in, in this school. You know, that, that, but we're fine-tuning, you know, and I, I feel like I'm giving them tools to analyze. Um, behaviors and situations and experiences that might enrich their life. I was in Sequoia 1. I got to kindergarten on my first day and there was Janet. My hope is that I've planted a seed or our team has planted a seed that someday when the kid is stressed or is in a reflective mode of, of, of thinking that that seed may, you know, oh yeah, I remember about this. Um, I'd been having a really severe chronic pain problem and all the medication and all the medical interventions weren't working. Kid who's now, I, I think he might be graduating from high school this year, but when he was in kindergarten, he had a medical emergency and couldn't breathe and the paramedics came and put him in the ambulance and he was, they looked at him and they said, you're very calm. And he said, I know how to get centered. And one day my physical therapist was taking me through a breathing exercise and some of the terms that she used kind of triggered those Aikido memories and I just felt my breath drop to my center. Parents didn't really understand what 
the values were. But I think toward the end of the year, when they saw their, you know, their own children doing the demonstration at the end of the year and seeing what they had learned was much more meaningful. And now it's just kind of a natural thing. I mean, nobody says, what do you mean energy time? Everybody kind of knows what that's all about and why we do it, what the values are. And so I called Janet and asked her for a review, I guess, if I could go back to kindergarten. The only way is to, is to continue, and it's a practice that um, once you're on the road or you've chosen it as a practice that you do till the day you die. I think you have to do it a lot to learn how to do it really good. It's the connection of the spirit and the aliveness and as long as you're alive you get to practice with your with that energy of, of incoming and what's happening inside of you. Yeah, that's, yeah you, you have to practice. to practice. I think about Aikido or ET or whatever you call it um, many 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 times a day you know, starting with my attitude when I wake up, you know, is to thank, be thankful for this most amazing day and to believe it. So I just wanted to tell you that I have a new grandchild and her name is Mom. Josie, <laughs> not Maki, that's the mommy's name. It has informed me through the joys and to, you know, the, the appreciation of the arrival of grandchildren. It informed me, um, when I was diagnosed with cancer and when Sam was dying of cancer. And there were times during both those, much more so when Sam was dying, um, that I wish, I wish I didn't know about center, you know? I wish I didn't know about the flow of energy because I just wanted to lie down and die. But I know I couldn't and, and um, be true to the practice. Slide, step, pivot, step back. Slide, step back. Good. You're trying, number one, not to hurt the child, to number two, to help that child grow and to and to do the same for yourself, you know that you don't know what's gonna come out. It's not good enough for me anyway to say, sit down because I tell you so. You know, I can do that, and sometimes I actually, I do that, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's the win-win that has become the balance point for me, not that you do this because I'm bigger and stronger and I'm your teacher, and so you have to do this. But if I can arrange it or set it up in myself and with that child's attention and being able to work skillfully with them that we can both win. You know, that makes my day, <laughs> you know, to, to come to that. I cannot give it up, plus I have the perfect forum here in this room where I can, where I have, where there is meaning for the work. You know, there's a context for it. And um, so I haven't retired. <laughs> Okay, thank you for your practice. Okay. This is my dojo. This is my arena. This is my forum. These are my babies. <laughs> well, are we stars now? You guys are so great coming in quietly. Thank you. Are we done? <laughs>